Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In this very short reminder, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to remind ourselves of a hadith recorded by al-imam al-Nawawi and before him al-imam al-Tirmidhi in his jami' and made famous by Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala in his 40 hadith from the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardah that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt wa atbi'i sayyiat al-hasanata tamhuha wa khaliqa al-nasi wa khaliqa al-nasa bi khuluqin hasan the Prophet ﷺ said, Have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. And the taqwa of Allah linguistically is to put a barrier between something that you're scared of and yourself, something that will protect you against your fear. So if you were to smash glass on the floor, you put your shoes on, then linguistically this is taqwa. And in the religion of Islam, taqwa is to put a barrier between yourself and between the punishment of Allah and his anger, his curse and the hellfire by doing as many good deeds as you can and avoiding as many sins as you can with the right intention and in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us to have taqwa wherever we are you never know where you'll be tomorrow you know what country you'll be in, what city you'll be in, what place you'll be in, what situation you'll be in happy or sad, rich or poor successful or unsuccessful but wherever you are in whatever situation you find yourself in make sure that you have the taqwa of Allah with you and when you take provision for your journey then take taqwa the best provision that you take for your journey is taqwa so the first part of the hadith the Prophet wasallam said have taqwa of Allah wherever you are then he said, follow up the bad deed with a good deed, it will wipe it out. Because we as Bani Adam, we always make mistakes. We always make, we fall into errors, we commit sins. And the best thing that you can do when you do something bad is to immediately follow it up with something good. And that's a part of your repentance and a part of not just repenting for what you've done but wiping out what you've done and replacing the bad deeds with good so whenever you find yourself doing something bad and you said you know i shouldn't have done that then immediately follow it up with something good so it can wipe it out and treat the people with the best of manners treat the people with the best of manners and that encompasses the manners that are we talk about sort of religious manners and religious sort of things that we're commanded to do in the religion in the way that we deal with people. And just good character, gentle dealing with people, being a person who is a person who gives glad tidings and who brings people near. As the Prophet ﷺ said, to give glad tidings and don't push people away. بَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا Give glad tidings and don't be a person who drives people away. And like Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ As Allah Azza wa Jal said, By the mercy of Allah you were gentle with them and if you had have been harsh and hard-hearted, they would have run away from you. And so if we try to implement these three basic guidelines, this is one of the comprehensive ahadith in Islam, and there's no doubt that this will put us in a much better position by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal that we make sure wherever we are in the world we have taqwa with us that we always, when we find ourselves doing something wrong try to follow it up with something good we always try to treat people and deal with people in the best possible way with the best of manners and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best wa salatu salam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh